You got something to say to Luke? Luke, you know, I'm really upset you're not here right now, but I do miss you, Luke, and I'm not upset. I'm not upset, Luke, because I'll see you again one day. Your biggest fan, Luke. I can't replace I you. you. I, I, I may or may not cry right now. Alex and the Dirty Birds, I miss you all. Well, the first game of the season is always so hyped up and expectations are pretty high. So it's understandable why Falcons fans are so, eh. What's the big draw to making? What's the big thing that stands out the most? And overwhelmingly, you're going to hear people talk about the music scene. Great job. I Dude. felt I felt nowhere but here the whole time. That, that, that's what I like to hear. I was about ready to take a charge halfway through this interview. <laughs> it seems like forever ago, this guy was roaming the sidelines in Athens. He's gone now, but that doesn't mean he can't come back to the Peach State every now and then. You pack 50 college baseball players onto one bus for six straight hours going through the mountains in North Carolina. Can't be too relaxing. Well, we've all had that awkward encounter. You're out with your new squeeze, night in the town. It's fun, it's new, just getting started. Then you run into your ex and you're like, wow, I guess you're doing pretty well for yourself. That, that's great, right? You guys have done that before, right? No? no. Okay, okay, that, that, that is just me, I guess. Well, take that feeling, and that's exactly how Mike Chastain feels at Warner Robins. The Demons are off to an 0-3 start, but there's plenty of reasons to get excited if you're a screaming demon. Thursday night, Chastain goes up against Houston County, where he served as a longtime Bears offensive coordinator. Now, Hoko is that ex-girlfriend that's doing pretty well for themselves. A 4-0 start has the Bears at number one in the Class 6A poll. Now, the matchup highly anticipated, but Chastain says Thursday isn't about him, but more about the rivalry. Anytime you get an in-town rival game like that, um, I mean, it's, 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 it's fun times, man. Uh, uh, it's going to be a great atmosphere tomorrow night. Uh, this weather's supposed to be great tomorrow night, I think. And uh, we're, just, we're just excited about it. A lot of people are doubting us and how we play and, you know, how good we are. And I feel like we're a lot better team than we've been showing and that if we can go out there and get this win, it'll put a big landmark on us. Kickoff at McConnell Talbert set for 7.30. Thursday night. Now this gives you an idea of just how dominant Houston County is on offense and how challenging this will be for Warner Robins. Chastain served as the OC in 2015. Now the Bears boasted one of the best offenses in the state. Easy to do with Jake Fromm at quarterback. Now turn around and look at this season. Through four games, the Bears on pace to shatter most of those marks from last season, averaging a full four points more per game. Now Houston County isn't the only potent offense in the area. Bradley Honeycutt and Jones County been lighting up teams all season long as well. Now, the Hounds quarterback played through a bad ankle injury in the Corky Kell Classic and then missed the following week. Now, last Friday against Locust Grove, he put on a show with nearly 500 total yards on offense. That earned him making touchdown club back of the week on it. Now, the senior this week talked about what the award means to him and the Hounds matchup with Woodland. It means a lot to me. Uh, Thank you making touchdown club for supporting athletes and it's a good achievement for me. I think we're gonna be good this week. We are coming off a good win last week. And we gotta bring it this week for women. They got a good defense, good offense, got a bunch of athletes. Honeycutt and the Hounds kick off against Woodland at the barking lot, 7.30 Friday night. Now Jones County and Woodland just one of the games on our first and ten rundown Friday night. Here's a couple of the big games in the area. Our game of the week features Mary Persons at Peach County. WGXA's Rick Devins will be live from Fort Valley on Friday. Big one at the MAC. Playoff matchup from a year ago. Northside trying to venture that loss to Ware County. You can catch all of it on first and ten this Friday at 1040 right here on Fox 24. High school softball action. Hampton taking on Jones County at the Hound Pound. Lady Hounds were barking in the fifth inning. Jada Williams ripping this one to left center. She goes Michael Jackson off the wall. Brene Howard showing off the wheels. She's coming all the way from second to score. That's where Williams would end up, but she wouldn't stay there long. Next batter, it's Maddie Finley. A little bloop shot to right. She singles. Williams comes around to score. It's 8-1 home team in Jones County showing off the defense. Check out Shelby Fonta. No, she didn't. Diving catch in center in Jones County. Rolls Hampton. 8-2 your final. Scores elsewhere. Stratford Academy bounces back after a tough loss to FPD. Eaglets 10 run Wilkinson County. Perry topping Warner Robins 4-1. And Dodge County blows past Northeast 15-0. College soccer action. Mercer hosting Jacksonville. And the Bears had their chances in the first half. On the attack here, it's Jordan Dura with the lefty. But a great diving stop by Mark Many. Still in the first, no score. Duru on the cross this time. Kobe Perez, a great tackle. Turns and shoots, but goes just wide. But the Bears 
finally break through in the 42nd minute. It's Will Bagru, Yahtzee. He had two goals on the night. Make it three in a row for Brad Ruzo and Mercer. They win it 3-1 over Jacksonville. Thursday afternoon was a typical practice for the Peach County Trojans. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will go with you wherever you go. At least that's the game plan for the Trojans, but this week was one they weren't anticipating. Uh, it was a tough couple of days, but I think for the most part since then they've been focused at least for a few hours a day. Garnering the Trojan spirit is the loss of teammate Raekwon Smith, who was killed in a car accident last Saturday night in Byron. He may not be on the field, but he's showing his Peach County pride up above. Raekwon's looking down on us, and he's looking for some big things for us to do on Friday night, and that's what we're going to try to do. This week, the memories turn to motivation as Peach County hosts Houston County Friday night in their season opener. It's a tall order for the Trojans, but they're rising to the challenge. Go against the number one team in 6A, just knowing who they are and what they have, is a good challenge really to start off the season. Hoko may have the big names, but the Trojans come into Friday night with a ton of confidence and plenty of swagger. We knew this was a big game, and we knew that we had the talent to beat them. So right now, we're pretty confident coming into this game. Though the focus of the week has been on the Bears, it's hard to forget about the beloved teammate that is so dearly missed. Everybody uh, loved to see all the time Rick Juan, and uh, so that's what I remember, and that's the last memories I got. And, uh, so uh, 